Good morning. morning. And welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministries. Woo! I hope you had a great week, and I thank God for allowing you to see us this morning. Amen. Amen. Um, before we get started, let's get started with a word of prayer. Amen. Father God, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just think about all that you've done for us, Lord. We just offer you praise and worship, Father God, because you've been an awesome God, a good God. Things may not be all that we will want them to be, but Lord, we just, you just keep blessing us, Lord. And we just thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for waking us up with a reasonable portion of health and strength, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the ability to move and to walk and to talk. We thank you, God, for allowing us to be a servant to you, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you, Father God, that you continue to watch over us and keep us, Father God. That you will bless the ministry, Father God, so we may reach the souls that you want us to reach, Father God. Continue to fill us with your Holy Spirit, Father God, so we can speak what thus said the Lord. Father God, take away us and our mindset and let us concentrate and focus on you. And we just thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do and all that you have done. Lord, we ask you, Father God, that you will watch and touch the man of the hour, Lord, that he will bring forth the word that you place in his heart, Father God, that you will anoint him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Father God, and that he can only say what thus said the Lord. And Lord, I ask you to touch the psalmist of the hour, Lord, that you would just give her Holy Ghost bonus, Father God, that you would just fill her with your anointing, Father God, and that she would sing the, Zon the songs of Zion with power and conviction, Lord. And we just ask you, Lord, to take away any fear or anxiety that she may have, Lord, and just fill her with your presence. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the, every prayer, every word, every comment that would be made on this hour, Lord. And we, Lord, we ask you that you would touch the ears of those who hear this word, Father God. That you would touch their hearts, Father God. That they will not only hear your word, but they will receive your words. And more importantly, Lord, that they'll be doers of your word. And we just thank you in advance for it, Lord. We, Lord, we ask you, Father God, that we touch Michael right now, Father God. That you would just give him in your anointing power and your comfort and power, Lord. Let him pray as unto you, Father God. And just fill them, Father God, with your strength and your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We ask for God just to watch over everyone under our side of voice that, you know, no matter what situation that you may be going on during this time, just know that God is a healer, God is a deliverer, and that you just go to him with whatever desires that you have in your heart. And, you know, God will see you through. You just mm -hmm. have to commit yourself to him. Yes. yes. Be obedient to him. But he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be there for you. And we just thank you, Lord, in, your, in advance, Father, for all that you're doing for our hearers and our listeners, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pray that you were able to join us this morning for our Sunday school lesson. Our Sunday school lesson came from Ezra chapter 6. We were um, dealing with verses 13 to 22 and was called free to worship. Um, excuse me, free to celebrate. Last week was free to worship. This week is free to celebrate. And the children of Israel, when they went back to Jerusalem after being captive, they were allowed to go back to their Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. And God touched the kings during that time period where they just released them to let them go back to their homeland. And they didn't, didn't send them empty-handed. He told them their neighbors will give them whatever they need, the silver and the gold, to go back to rebuild the temple. In addition, they gave resources that they need so they could survive during that time period. And he, the king Darius at the time, and Cyprus, gave all the, um, the articles that was in their temple that they was taken from Jerusalem's temple by Nebuchadnezzar. He gave all that material back, the golds and the gold... Um, bowls and everything they took in the silver gave it back to the people so they could take it back to Jerusalem once so once the temple was built they could put that stuff back into the temple but just let us know how God is a deliverer mm -hmm. things may be going bad for a while but God is a deliverer but you know sometimes just keep in mind when you're disobedient there are consequences mm -hmm. and sometimes those consequences aren't pleasant Next week's lesson is called Free Because of the Lord. And it's going to be coming from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. The devotional reading is, is the same. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. 
And the background scripture is the entire book of Deuteronomy 8. So when you get an opportunity, please, you know, review the lessons from the past weeks as well as Sunday school lesson for next week so you'll be ready to receive the word of God. And if there's any time that you have any questions, don't hesitate to send us those questions and we will address them. Today is Communion Sunday, so if you have a little bit of time, get your crackers and your juice, whatever you want to take for Communion, so you'll be ready when we um, get ready to have Communion. In addition, if anyone need Communion cups, please text us and let us know so we are, can supply that to you as well. Our outreach ministry was postponed yesterday because we were um, expecting rain and heavy winds. So it's been rescheduled to next Saturday morning. Same place, same time, 8 o'clock at the um, Vincent DePaul Church on Front Street and Fayette at the 8 o'clock hour. Oh, those individuals who um, need a tax statement for filing their taxes, please email us. If you, um, some of you already sent out, but if it's someone out there who may contribute something to us and you need a statement for your taxes, just send us an email with your address and we will send that information um, to you this week. Okay. All right. Our lesson for today, or our sermon from today, it's going to be coming from Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 to 14. And it's entitled, A Thankful Heart. And I'm going to be reading um, the text that you're hearing. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness, and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Our scripture again was Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. Okay. Our next voice will be Minister Bastrop Eccles with a Salmonic selection, and following Minister Eccles will be Pastor Michael Eccles, Sr., with the Word of God. <laughs> Good morning, family. Good morning. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I can lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I can lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. You are 
because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I can lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace, and Lord, I worship you because of who you are, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace. And Lord, I worship you because of who you are. And Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. Because of who he is. Amen. We thank Amen. the Lord today for this Lord's Day. Thank God for uh, your tuning in to be with us today. We thank God for being such a gracious Savior. We tried to plan best we could yesterday, <laughs> but... um. We could have done, but we thank God. God works all things well. God allowed us to organize some of the things that we have to give so we'll be better organized for next week's ministry. So those who keep us in your prayers, we'd be guided by God. And that God would actually send people who need help in the location that we are. That he would send people who need help. We'd be able to give them some assistance. So we thank God for you today, my family, for all the things God is also doing in your lives because he's a living God. He's not only working... In my life, he's working on all our lives to make us better people. So we thank God for that also. We thank God for uh, all the things he has done. And I guess I'm grateful this morning because our subject matter this morning, our sermon title is A Thankful Heart. Amen. 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 So I guess I'm practicing that on you this morning. But I thank, <laughs> thank you God so much that we, are, uh, we should have a thankful heart. If we continue our journey in uh, the book of Colossians, as we move into the text um, this week, uh, we've been dealing with Paul. We've been dealing with Paul giving uh, in a in the midst of his prayer, and Paul is praying for uh, spiritual uh, endowment or knowledge, and Paul is praying for uh, a walk that's worthy for this church that is facing some issues with false teaching. And now we come to the place in Paul's prayer after he doing doing his prayer, he not only uh, made requests, he also gave praise. Amen. So Amen. remember this in your prayer time. What a, what a good thing to remember. Always stop to give thanks. Even Philippians tells us, uh, make requests known with prayer and thanksgiving. We have to mix our requests with thanksgiving. Amen. Even start off with some praise. Amen. For the things that God has done in and through our lives. So Paul in this text, and let me just, uh, I, I, uh, I have a, a, a little story to tell you before we get into the text. It was this... Uh, <laughs> It was this um, elderly gentleman who bought a piece of property, a small piece of property. And when he bought the property, there was nobody in the area. He bought, the, the, the area had not been developed, but he bought a small piece of property and built a little house on the property. And through time, the process of time, uh, the area began to flourish. And the property value around him began to soar. And his family had uh, died off. He was there alone. And he was in this house. He, he was there, but he couldn't afford to do 
the necessary repairs, but he was living there. And he thought to himself one day, I'm going to just wait till the price gets just right, and I'm going to sell this and move on to something else. So the, the property value went up, and sure enough, one day, a millionaire uh, decided that he was going to come in and buy the block. Amen. Mm. He got big paper. He wouldn't come and buy the block. And so the, the gentleman opened him and said, oh, this, this is good. This is what I've been waiting for all my life, waiting for this property to go up so I can sell and move on to something else. And so the, the agent of the millionaire came by his house and said, what do you want for the house? The guy gave him a price. He gave him a big price. Ginger, uh, the older man gave him a big price. And the guy said, sure, that's, that's fine. And so he had a small lot. With a, with a, by this time, the house was not even a house. It was more like a shack. But he bought it. The guy bought it, and he said, I'm going to, in two weeks, I'll come back with, with the paperwork. Until then, I'm going to give you $1,000 as a good faith deposit on the house. So when the, the agent left, the old man got excited. This is what I've been waiting for. And he's giving me, he gonna, he's willing to pay this kind of money for this. He said, well, at least I can do is try to fix it up a little bit. He uses some of that $1,000, go out and get some paint and fix the window panes. And he fixes the doors off the hinges, and he fixes it and paints it all up. And so in two weeks' time, he said, this will make it livable. The guy's going to buy it. In two weeks' time, the millionaire comes by with the agent and with the paperwork. And the, 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 the uh, old man, he's nervous. He's, all this money ain't coming to him. He's excited. He's nervous. And, and he noticed one thing, though. The guy kicked out and never mentioned anything about how he fixed the house. So he says, I'm going to sign it. You notice how I fixed it up, the paint? And the millionaire says, oh, 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 we didn't buy this for what's on it. We bought it for what we're going to put on it. Y'all look at me blank. So y'all look at me real blank face. Like, what does God do with anything? I want you to know that when God saved you, He didn't save you for what you were. He saves you what He's gonna put in you. Amen. Ain't that good news? Amen. He saved you for the work that He was gonna put in your life, not for what you were. Amen. Aren't you glad Amen. about that? Yes. Yes. And uh, all this fixing up, we try to do. <laughs> all this fixing up, we try to do to make ourselves acceptable acceptable to God is not even what God is looking for. God is looking for not us to fix ourselves up, but to surrender ourselves to him so he might do the work. He's got a whole new plan for us. Amen. He's got a whole new plan for our lives, bigger than we ever thought it would be. And guess what? When he gets done, that little stuff we had, it ain't going to have no value at all. Because what he's given to us is going to be eternal. Amen. Amen. And so Paul here in this uh, chapter, in, in, this, in, in the midst of his prayer, as he begins to uh, give thanks to God, he's not thanking God for the things that are going to come. He's thankful to God for the things God has already done. Amen. How many grateful what God has already done? Yes. yes. He's saying giving thanks to the Father. This word giving thanks unto the Father, he's not, he's not even going to talk about houses and lands and of uh, the things, even things that God had done in his life prior. He's going to talk about things that were done by Christ. Mm -hmm. Those are the things we ought to If you have anything else to be grateful for this morning, you ought to thank God for your salvation. Amen. 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 You look around and things aren't going right in your life and things are falling apart. We got to raise our eye level a little higher. We got to get beyond the, the, uh, the, the, the area where the snakes dwell. You know, there's, a, um, there's this... Um, uh, area I was reading about, doing a little study on, about this called the snake line. Uh, the snake line. Snakes and um, snakes only go, there's a certain level where snakes can't get the oxygen, the oxygen they need in order to survive. So you can uh, go to a certain elevation and snakes can't survive there. We've got to learn how to live our lives above the snake line. Amen. Amen. And, and, and settlers in, in early America, they would sell property based on how high the property was above the snake line. Of course, the mountainous areas were hard to work and to farm and to clear and to grow things. But if you took a, a, a house in the valley below the snake line, you were subject to get bitten by snakes. We even had properties where we used to live at in Randallstown, or Baltimore County below Randallstown, where one side of the house we lived at, uh, we didn't have any water behind us. But across the street, they had a little a little lake behind them. They were in snake land. Mm -hmm. and they were getting snakes in their yard and in the backyards and basement. We didn't have that problem. So this, you gotta you gotta remember that there's a certain elevation you can go to where you're above the snake line. Some of us like to go down to the snake line, don't we? And deal with stuff that's above the snake that deals us in the valley. But God is telling us if we live a certain way, He's not saying we'll never be attacked. What He's saying is that when Satan will never be able to attach itself to us mm -hmm. in that attack, we will survive that 
attacked because we're living in another 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 sphere where God has promised that He's broken the power of darkness. Y'all don't want to hear me this morning. I'm talking about what God has already done for you. Amen. Amen. God has already done certain things for us, and we ought to be grateful. He says, Thanks be unto the Father. This this word giving thanks to the Father is in the present tense. Giving thanks unto the Father. Giving thanks unto Unto the Father, which means, when I say in the present tense, that means he's saying that we're supposed to live a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Amen. 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 A lifestyle of thanksgiving. Present tense means that we're doing it and we keep on doing it. Amen. 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 We're doing it and we keep on doing it. So we're giving thanks to the Father. Why am I thanking the Father this morning? Because the Father has made us meet. And a better translation would be, he has made us, he has qualified us. The Father has qualified us. Isn't that good news? The Amen. Father has qualified us. The Father has qualified us. And you know, when I think about that, it lets me know that in order for us to really live this Christian life, we need to have a heart of thanksgiving because the crown, the crown, the very crown of a Christian's character is to have that kind of heart. That kind of grateful heart. The kind of heart that gives God thanks. Giving thanks is not only something we should do. It, it's, it's, it's what we should do. It's an obligation. Uh, it's an obligation for those who are favored by God. We ought to have a grateful heart. We ought to give God thanks because he has made us fit. It's an awareness of the goodness of God. Giving thanks continually to God. It's an awareness. Now, giving thanks to the Father he made us meet. What does that really mean? It means he qualified us. He qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. God has qualified us. Nobody else could qualify us for heaven. Nobody else could qualify us for heaven. I don't care how what kind of job you have, what section of the town you live on, how much uh, credit, what your, your credit score is. It doesn't matter. None of those things qualify us. It don't matter where you live, who, who, you, who you were raised by, who, what your grandmama believed. None of that stuff qualifies us. Only God can qualify us. Yes. Only God can give us that, that kind of uh, 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 qualification, that kind of uh, meeting those, uh, those, re those requirements to heaven. Meaning that level that God wants us to have. There's nothing you and I can do for it. No, not only can nobody do it for us, we can't even do it for ourselves. We cannot qualify ourselves. You know how it is that you go out for uh, uh, certain properties, you go out to, uh, we were shopping for homes, you have to find out what you qualify for. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't qualify for everything. If you got good credit, guess what? Good credit will get it. Amen. Amen. Good credit will get you wherever you want to go. And if, you, if you're graced by God and have good credit, thank God for that. But you had to be qualified to live in certain areas, qualified to buy certain homes, qualified. You need to be pre-qualified. You want to make sure that when you, before you sign those lines, you want to make sure that you're able to make those payments. Mm -hmm. But aren't you glad today that God has qualified you? Amen. Yeah. Amen. He's qualified you. Even when folks don't like you, guess what? You can still say what? I'm qualified. Uh, Amen. Even when they talk about you, guess what? Qualified. You're qualified. You know why you know you're qualified? You're not boasting in and of yourself. You're qualified because God has done. Amen. God has done the Father. Thanks to the Father because he has made us meet. He has qualified us to be what? Partakers of the inheritance of the saints of life. God has given us an inheritance. God has allowed it. Like, you remember back in the Old Testament where um, the children of Israel moved or actually took possession of the land that God promised to them and how each tribe had so much? You got to understand that when you're a child of God, God marks out your territory. God gives you that eternal heritage, territory that nobody can take what God has for you. God not only marks it out in heaven, he marks it out on earth. Guess what? What God has for you, what? Yeah, what yeah. God has for your life, can't nobody stop you from it. Can't nobody block you from it. You can't even, well, you can handle yourself. I ain't going to say you can't stop it. Because mm -hmm. you can handle yourself by getting all in your way, overthinking stuff and doubting God. You can stop it yourself. But in other words, God has a plan. It may be hidden, but it won't be stopped. Mm -hmm. yeah. You might have to go the long way around. How about with the long way around? You yeah. might have to go the long way around. I thank God for God's GPS system. Yes. Amen. 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 He want to make a wrong, I make a wrong turn. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I, make a, I make a wrong turn. Uh, uh, thank God the lady on there, I don't know her name. Whatever her name is. I got a lady on my member, gentleman, whoever. The you the direction. I, never, I don't know her name. But she, she doesn't say, you stupid, you dummy, you made a wrong turn. She doesn't say anything. Sometimes she'll say, make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. But you hear this thing recalculating. Aren't yeah. you glad today? Even we make a return, we make a wrong a return. <laughs> <laughs> we make a wrong turn. Aren't you glad today that, you, that, the, that the Holy Spirit says what? Recalculating. recalculating. Yeah. Aren't you glad about that? Yeah. And guess Amen. what? I might, I might make a lot of wrong turns. I'm going to get where I got to go because yeah. I'm following God's Spirit. Amen. Amen. So you got to understand that if, if the GPS can do that, 
If a system can recalculate, don't you know that God can get you where he wants you to go? Yes. yes. God has given us that portion of his inheritance. It's inheritance that not only do we have all the saints have, and the saints ought to walk in light. How many know that we ought to walk in light? Because it says in the next verse, who had delivered us from the power of darkness. We ought to walk in light. You put a, you put a blind man in a room that he's unfamiliar with, with all kinds of things in that room, he will have a rough time. He's he going to have a rough time in that room. He's wandering around in the darkness. He's going to have a rough time because he don't know which way to go or what to do. So you leave him alone enough, he'll start adapting. He'll start thinking that his way of life is normal. Mm -hmm. He'll start thinking everybody's blind. Mm -hmm. He'll start thinking that everybody should be uh, only concerned about themselves. Mm -hmm. He'll even get confused about his gender sometimes. Mm -hmm. He'll think that, you know, uh, maybe I'm not really a man. He'll start thinking all kinds of crazy things. Why? Because he's in the dark. He doesn't have the way. Yeah. And so this is the description of those who do not have the light of Jesus Christ. It's dark. And people are trying to feel their way. And assuming that life is all about me. Assuming that God was confused when he made me. Mm. Oh, my, my God's not confused. Mm -hmm. God knows when he made you. Yeah. But in the dark, we think that this is normal for me to feel my way and figure out my own way for myself. But how many glad the light showed up? Yes. Hallelujah. The light showed up. Jesus Christ is a, a pure example of what a man of, of, of God should be. He showed us the example, showed us the light, showed us how to walk, to live, and showed us how to walk, how to treat one another, showed us how to go through persecution, showed us how to live a life that was self-sacrificing, totally contrary to what this man in the dark would have even thought. So you may be thinking you know your way, but the Bible says there's a way, there's a way that seems right unto the man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. We may think that we know the way, we understand the way, but you got to come to the light. And thanks be to God, that by the grace of God, Paul is thanking God, God made me fit, but God also gave me light. How many glad for light yes, today? Yes, Lord. Light Lord. to know which way God wants me to go. Mm -hmm. My life is no longer, I'm staggering around in the dark, trying to feel my way. I thought everything had to be about me. Mm -hmm. I thought life was all about me. I thought I had to get ahead on my own. I thought I had to make it on my own. I thought I could make my own decision when I was wandering around. But little did I understand that I was wandering around in a maze of darkness. Could not see the wretched. Did not have the wretched. But when the light came on, I began to see that life is not about me. Amen. Amen. Life is about the one who made me. Yes. Yes. Life is about yes. the one who designed me. Life is about the one who walks and talks with me. Life is not about me. Life is about him. Yes. As long as we think this life is about us and our decisions, what we want to do, we'll always be chasing things that will never come to pass. Always chasing things that will always, we will get them, maybe we get those material things, we'll get those aims and goals we have, but get to the top of that mountain and still say, I'm not satisfied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many know we used to play that thing about getting to the top, getting to the, uh, being the king of, of the, of the, uh, we were kids, being of the, castle. of the castle. You had to stand up on something and nobody could pull you down. You got there, but what does it really mean when you get there? It just means you're just there. Yep. And many people who have money, have position, who have climbed the ladder of success, have gotten up there and become suicidal. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because all they thought that, that life was about, they had gotten to that pinnacle of life, and they realized there was nothing. There still was an emptiness there because all that stuff just was just stuff. Mm -hmm. All that fame was just fame. It did not give completeness in life. Mm -hmm. Only Christ can do that. Yeah. Yeah. People wander their dark and begin to define themselves, define other people. They'll even try to define you. But guess what? How is a blind man going to help another blind man? The Bible says a blind man follow a blind man. Both of them going to be in the ditch. Mm -hmm. We need somebody who can see. Guess what his name is? Jesus. Jesus. His name is Jesus. Who, who opens the eyes of the blind, both physically and spiritually. Aren't you glad about that? Mm -hmm. He says, who had delivered us. From the power of darkness. He didn't say he will deliver us. He said he already delivered us. Yes. He's reaching way back to Calvary. Can y'all see that today? Mm -hmm. He wants you to know that some of us are waiting on deliverance. Oh God, deliver me. I want you to know that deliverance has already taken place. Mm -hmm. Waiting on God. Oh God, deliver me. Oh God, you know, we pray these kind of prayers. We pray prayers with things uh, 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 that God has already done for us. If I could illustrate that, I could give my wife... Uh, I can tell my wife to give me that Bible. Give me the Bible. Give me. It's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. She killed every vampire. <laughs> Any demon. <laughs> <laughs> give me the Bible. You got it. Give me the Bible. You have it. 
Give me the Bible. I don't want more books. <laughs> I'm trying to illustrate to you. We ask God for stuff He's already He's already given us. So I'm asking God for deliverance, and all God is saying to me, "You walk in that deliverance." Hallelujah. Amen. You walk Amen. in what Jesus did for you. Amen. Amen. You're still waiting for him to give you. You're praying, God, deliver me from alcohol. God, deliver me from drugs. I want you to know he already did. You're going to give God a praise yes. right there. Yes. He yes. broke the power yes. of darkness over your life and over yes. my life. God yes. has already delivered me. All he wants me to do is walk in what he had provided. So we don't need to pray for God to deliver me. Ask God to help me walk in the power that you have already provided for me. Walk in the strength that you have already given me. Walk in the faith you told me to walk in. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. God wants to yes. trust him. Amen. Yes. Deliverance is yours. Every time I, I pray to God, ask him. Uh, and, and you know, as you get older, the Lord, he won't, let you get, he won't let you get away with that stuff. I say, God, I want to play the victim. God, just give me strength not to overeat. <laughs> Deliver me from the appetite. I want to play the victim. And God come back and say, Mike, everything you need, I already gave you. Yes, sir. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've already given you the power to do what you need to do. Yeah. I remember George Myers saying this. How am I going to rebuke demons? I can't rebuke the lemon pie. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Sometimes you just got to rebuke that stuff that comes your way. The stuff you don't need. Stuff you don't need coming your way to know. Just rebuke to say, no, in the name of Jesus, God has already given we waiting on Weight Watchers. We waiting on a certain diets. We wait. We get surgery. We doing all these things, and God is saying, "Everything you need, I've given to you." Mm -hmm. Yes. So I come away realize I'm not a victim of anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is what it is because I made it what it is. Mm -hmm. yep. Y'all gotta say that's facing the truth. It is what it is because I made it what it is. Because the Lord I serve has already provided the means. He says, there's no temptation that has taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He would not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able. But with the temptation, he make a way of escape. Some of yes. us haven't taken the escape route. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Haven't taken the escape route. I want you to know that what the scripture is saying today. God had delivered us from the power of darkness. Mm -hmm. yep. God had delivered us from demonic influences. People are afraid of demons and afraid of uh, 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 of darkness, afraid of uh, uh, someone putting a spell on you and afraid of going in certain places because people are evil there. You don't have to be afraid, child mm -hmm. of God. Not at all. You don't have to be afraid because God has insulated you with his Holy Spirit. Yes. 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 God has covered you with his blood. Mm. You have to fear what the enemy has for you. Oh, the enemy will make you think he's big and bad. Not the Bible all. said the devil is like a royal lion. They say he was a royal lion. He said he was like right. a royal lion. Yes. Guess what? He's wrong, but the but Jesus Christ snatched out his teeth. <laughs> hey, yes. hallelujah. He don't yeah. have a bite. And how, he, how does he get advantage of us? He gets advantage of us through deception. Yep. He makes us think he's got that kind of power over our lives. Mm -hmm. And we believe it. You know what? He'll move in. Mm -hmm. yep. I remember Tony Evans saying this, talking about evil spirits. He said, just like roaches. Mm -hmm. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> he said, just like roaches. Roaches assume if you have a filthy house, they assume you're inviting them in. Mm. Oh, my, 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 my. Mm. They will assume if they have an invitation into your house when they see filth, they will assume they have an invitation. That's why they come in. Mm. Right? Mm. The same thing with demons. <laughs> That's how they work. When they see dirt in our lives, when they see us walking in darkness, they assume they have an invitation to your life. And although you are a child of God, you can still be influenced by the devil. Mm -hmm. yes. Peter was uh, an apostle of Christ. Yet the Lord had to look at him and say, get behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. And he had to say to, to, to Peter, you know, sometimes the Lord will need to rebuke us. Amen. Amen. You know, Peter wanted, all Peter wanted was good things for Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, Jesus, I'm not going, you're not going to die. But do you understand that the only way to our redemption was death? He says, Peter, you're concerned about the things of man instead of the things of God. And sometimes the things of God are tough. Yeah. Sometimes the things of God are sacrificial. Sometimes mm -hmm. the things of God will cost us friends and cost us situations. But are you still willing to pay the cost? Because it's not about what favors me. It's about what favors God. Amen. Yes. Amen. He says, get behind me, Satan. That was the devil speaking through Peter. Mm. Say you show we won't let you die. That was the devil speaking to Peter. Although Peter's heart was sincere. How many know you can be sincere or you want to be sincere? But you can be sincerely wrong. Mm -hmm. You can be sincerely deceived. Mm -hmm. You can be sincerely controlled by the evil spirits. Yeah. 
in all our sincerity. We, I know we all want to get it all right, but you got to understand, as long as we have these things in our lives, we give the devil place. Of, James says, don't give the devil place. As long as we have, he's talking to Christians, give the devil no place in your life. As long as we give him place, he will assume his invitation to come mm -hmm. in and use us for his glory instead of us being used for God's glory. Yes. Mm -hmm. You got a temple. You know you got a bad temple. Mm -hmm. Don't just say you know how I am when you blow off at somebody. You know how I am. No. Bring up nasty evil behind the Lord. Yeah. And say, Lord, I got this temple and it's not glorifying you. Lord, I got this habit. I want to cuss. Oh, I want to tell. I, I got some stuff I want to say. I got I, I like to express myself this kind of way. That's just how I am. The Lord knows I blow off. But you got to understand that that's not how God, that's not what God wants to take you. God wants to create you a clean heart. Isn't that good news? God wants to get that temple out of you to realize the thing that had to be your way. You had to be so controlling and so overbearing. You had to take things so rough. God will show you that he's in control even when things seem out of control. Give God a praise right there. Amen. How many of God's in control? God is in control even when things seem out of control. Even when I can't manipulate and I can't control stuff. But I got to recognize that God has another plan. That's right. Yes. God has a plan so far beyond my plan. Mm -hmm. God has a plan that's so greater than my plan. God has a mind that's so much greater than my mind. And all those things are going haywire. I gotta, I'm trusting right now that God is working it out. How many got that kind of faith today? Amen. That yeah. God is working it out. God is the one who works all things out for those who love him. Amen. He said they're all working for my good. Right. How many know God's working for your good? Yes. Yes. God is working for my good. Touch yourself right now and say, God, God is working this. Is working this. this thing I'm going through. This thing I'm going for through. My good. For my and good. Give God a praise. Do you believe Amen. that? Do you believe that? God is working this thing out. Uh, he's about to turn around and let you know it's in your favor. Amen. He says the trials work for you. How many know the trials work for you? Yes. Uh, this little girl was outside in a garden one day. She's outside in the garden of flowers her mother had planted. She's out there saying, Mom, I finally realized. I realized uh, why the flowers grow up. Why flowers grow out the ground. She said, why? He said, she said, because they're trying to get rid of, they're trying to get away from dirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. How many know Amen. we ought to be like the flowers? <laughs> and if you're going to be what God calls you to be, you got to grow out of the dirt. Mm -hmm. Amen. But, but you know, the thing about the title of God, even though you're saved, you're always going to have this dirt to deal with on this side. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're made from dirt, but you know, you can grow out of it. Yes. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I'm ready to grow out of it. I'm ready, I'm ready, to, grow I'm ready to grow out and be a better me. Yeah. I'm ready yeah. to flower full for God. Amen. Amen. You can't have a rose without thorns. Mm -hmm. Oh, give God some praise right Amen. now. Amen. Anything, Amen. anything worth having is worth working for. There's always those thorns that are going to come along the way. But guess what? I'm still going to be that flower God made me to be. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You, you, you know, you got you, you to gotta have more than two lips. You got to be a tulip. <laughs> Amen. We like to use our lips to do whatever we want to do. Tell some I'm God developing me. God's and to be what he man. wants me to be. Yes. We gotta understand this. Thanks be to God that God has made us fit. And God has put us into his kingdom. God has delivered us from the power. Isn't that something to think about, y'all? God has delivered us from the power of darkness. The power of darkness, that's the authority of darkness. Jesus said this, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Aren't you glad he said that, y'all? Yeah. God's got a church. You ought to know the church is, is, the, is, the, is the body that God is using. I'm not talking about your church and your denomination. I'm talking about the universal church. Anybody who, who names the name of Christ is a part of the church. Amen. Yeah. You got to realize the church is bigger than your church. Yeah. The church is bigger than my church. The church, the church don't belong to you or me. The church is God's church. It's the Lord's church. It is universal. It doesn't have denominations. It doesn't have a certain building to go in. The church of God is universal church. And if you're a body, in the body of Christ, you got to understand what you're worshiping is not the church. What you're worshiping is a building. Mm. What you're worshiping is the auditorium. What you're worshiping is the building. It's the auditorium. It's not the building that makes the church. The church are the people mm -hmm. who go in the building. So when we have church, it's the church that's come to the building, not that we go into the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise right here. Yeah. The, the church is going in the building because the church is made up of the body of Christ. It's universal. And God has a way of working things. So we got to get beyond small mindedness because God is sending people here and sending people there. There's no need to be jealous of what somebody else is doing because when I last check, there's a whole lot of lost souls out there. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> when I last check, I'm not talking about chicken fries and, and fashion shows. I'm talking about a whole lot of lost souls out there. Yes. 
You want to compete in those kind of things, that's fine. But that's not what the church is about. A church is not a social club. A church is supposed to be reaching the lost for the kingdom of God. Reaching the lost. Being concerned for the lost. For the kingdom of God. Anything that doesn't reach, it doesn't bring salvation, is not from God. Amen. Anything that doesn't have that motive for the kingdom of God. Anything that doesn't have that motivation of building God's kingdom is not from God because the Lord is about building his church. Yes. Not building our church. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is about building his church. It's about people. It's about caring about people. You know how I ask God to give me a greater compassion for people. You know, because we don't want to we want to love who we want to love. But God says love everybody. Yes. We want to pray for who we want to pray for. But the Lord says pray. And listen, God, holy hands, pray for everybody. Pray for the kings. Pray for those in authority. Pray for everybody. We pick and choose, but God is telling us, no, we gotta get bigger minded than that. Understand that God's got a worldwide mission. Yes. And all we do is play a small part of it. Yeah. Amen. And all I want to do is play that small part that God has called me to play. And I want to support those who play in their parts. We get together, guess what? That's some power. Yes. Yes. Amen. When we all centered around Jesus Christ, that's some power. Recognize the power of darkness is trying to divide us. That's who's trying to divide us. The power of darkness is telling us to, to mistreat people who are who are, who are coming to God's house and to mistreat people and turn people away and refuse people to come in sometimes who had desire to know God. This is not of God. That's not the spirit of God that's doing that. I'm not saying you're not saying this. You're not acting in order. You're out of order. We, you, we begin to mistreat each other that are our family members. We begin to mistreat each other who love God. We begin to belittle each other. That's not from God. That's part of the enemy's strategy. If I can just discourage them. If I can just discourage them. If I can just get them off the path. Then they won't realize that they've been delivered from my power. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if I can just get them off the path, then they'll be fighting each other instead of fighting my kingdom. Some church the devil had to go in. Because <laughs> he got all, all the confusion and bickering going on. He's not going to a place where, where they looking, where they trying to serve Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to a place now. I already got them locked up. They're arguing with each other about colors and, <laughs> and uniforms and shoes and mm -hmm. hair lifts and all these other things. I'm going somewhere. I got them busy worrying about the non-essentials. Mm -hmm. I'm going where people really love God. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm going to stir up some stuff. So be aware, my child of God. Be aware that the devil is seeking to have a, a foothold in your life. You know, when the Bible says give the devil no place, what it's talking about, you ever gone to the rock? I never said, have you ever gone to the rock climbing thing? I never climbed no the rocks. <laughs> they would take me on vacation to say, uh, in Jamaica one time and took me out somewhere and said, oh, we're going to climb these rocks. I said, oh, no, the devil's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on vacation. I rebuked that. I'm on vacation. I said, I'll meet you on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. I let him climb the rock. I see people falling. I see ambulance come in and take people away. I said, oh, no, that's confirmation. Thank you, Lord. That's confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about it's fun. I didn't made it to the top. I said, I see you. And I went up to the top and took pictures like I climbed it. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens in climbing rocks is that in order to climb those rocks, you have to get a, a, a grip. You have to get a grip on the next rock to pull up. And some of those rock climbing places the kids do now, they're hard because the wall is on smooth. You got to get the littlest, the littlest piece that you can hold on to to climb up. That's what the, devil, the Bible says, give the devil a place. It says, give him no toehold. Don't give him a place where he can launch his attack in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the devil thought. They are not talking about how he thought we walking with the Lord. So he said, I can't mess with them, so I'm messing with the children. Mm -hmm. ha, he know he know what to do, don't he? I can't mess with them because they pray. I, I can't mess with them. So you know what? I'm going to go into the children. I'm going to have the children acting crazy. So, so they'll get distracted from me, and they won't serve me. The devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. I learned what to do with children. They grown now. I learned to do grown folk. They grown folk now. I learned to do it. We got to give them to God. Amen. Amen. So you sit there thinking you can control your child's life and their decisions. You say, I taught them right. They know better. Yeah, I know all that stuff you done did. But guess what? When they with their friends, I don't know if you say mean anything. All that matters to them is their friends. But while they have their friends, you get on your knees. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can't get on your knees like me, you can stand up or kneel or sit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but talk to God. Cross street. <laughs> Lay out. <laughs> Lay out somewhere you can get up from. <laughs> don't lay on the can't get up. Yeah, lay on the bed. <laughs> lay on the bed. <laughs> anyway, pray. And watch God do their lives. 
I remember, I think I told you guys some time ago, a few weeks ago, I remember worrying about the children, worrying about their decisions, worrying about their friends, and not letting them go ahead, don't no want to get that part of this place, that other place. And God said, I saved you. <laughs> he said, I saved you. And that's how I think about the crazy stuff I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 21215, some of y'all know what that is. <laughs> that's where I grew up in, 21215. I grew up in Pimlico. And we had some crazy stuff, and still crazy stuff going on over there. We had some crazy stuff to deal with. And I did some crazy stuff. But God still saved me. Mm -hmm. And God reminded me, I still saved you behind. If I can save you, I can save them. Stop right. trying to control. Let me have my way in their life. Let them get their own. We try to protect people. And God is saying, no, I don't want you to protect them. I want you to let them go so they can, learn, they can have their own testimony. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. They got to have their own testimony. I, I seen it, and I, I didn't mean to go off on this, y'all. You know, I'm a chase this rabbit hole there. But I remember <laughs> I look and I observe things. As coming up and growing up a church, I observe things. Those children, those children, their parents made them stand up and recite things and made them come to church and made them try to act like Christians and made them do things they didn't want to do even when they got the age of the, they got teenage, they didn't want to do these things. I watched those, a lot of those children wind up being hellions. Mm -hmm. Because you know what you can't do? You can't force your child to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not at all. You cannot put a Christian suit on a little boy and girl and make them a Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of my, my children's greatest, uh, 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 worst times in their childhood is when we tried to send them to a Christian school. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all go. I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, but I got, I got to share this. Keep going. Some of the worst times were when we sent them to a Christian school. We wanted to be Christianized. We didn't want the, the school system to have uh, their way in programming our children to things against God. So we tried to Christianize them, take them to church every time we got to put them in the Christian school, and found out that my kids learned how to cuss in a Christian school. <laughs> <laughs> my little boy came home. I can't tell you what he said to me. He came home and said, Daddy, <laughs> somebody called me. And blah, blah, blah. I said, what? Then we went one day, he got banged in school. I, I think what happens, in, uh, I'm not saying all Christian schools. I'm not, I can't say every. I think what happens is the, that the, the parents know those children are being possessed. <laughs> uh -huh. The parents know that Johnny ain't right. <laughs> and so they send Johnny to a Christian school, hoping that somehow they'll be exercised. <laughs> <laughs> then I come to realize that, 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 that the world is not like that. Mm -hmm. The world is not Christianized. You want to put somebody in a Christian situation and expect them to operate in the world? So I realized they had to get out there and rub shoulders with all kinds of walks in life. Mm -hmm. I realized they had to, we had to teach them at home. Not only teach them at home, not only bring them to church, but model what Christianity was. Amen. Oh, yes. my Amen. Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You can't just bring them to the building and expect them to become a Christian when you living like, oh, Lord, mm. I didn't mean to go down here. When you living like this, you living in darkness, expect that child, you know what the child sees? That child thinks that everybody, because of our lives, that child grows up thinking that everybody goes to church is a hypocrite. Because mm. mom and daddy did say one thing and did another. And they grow up with the mentality. I got some friends right now, and their biggest issue is they've been around hypocrisy so much, they don't believe that anybody serving God sincerely. Mm -hmm. Because why are they in that dark room? And they believe that because they're in that dark room, everything around them was dark. Mm -hmm. Everybody around them were like they were. But there's some people, y'all, who love God. Amen. Yes. Yes. They ain't got it all right. They don't do it all right. They don't say it all right. Don't profess to be perfect, but they, they don't want to live in the dirt any longer. Yeah. And mommy, why? I know why the flowers grow. Hallelujah, somebody. I know yes. why. I know yes. why Christians grow. How many of y'all grow? Because you don't want to deal with the dirt. Yeah. You don't want to live under the snake zone. You want to be a love above the snake line. You want to live for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. He tell you that God has delivered us from the power of darkness. Yes. Anything the power of darkness can bring our way, God has delivered us. Mm -hmm. I might not look delivered, but I'm delivered. Mm -hmm. I might get sick sometimes, but I'm still delivered. 
I might be in a dark situation, but guess what? Even in a dark situation, I still have a praise. Yes. Oh, you better give God yes. a shot right there. Yes. You know why? Yes. Because praise develops in dark situations. Yes. Worship develops in dark situations. You got to understand the fire for the child of God never destroys them. The fire reveals them. Hallelujah. Yes. Give yes. God a praise yes. right there. The fire reveals them. The fire doesn't destroy the child of God. The fire reveals them. When you go through stuff, it brings out who you really are. Oh, Give God some praise. You can't just stay around the fire. You gotta get. You gotta understand what it is to be in the fire. Mm -hmm. You know, Peter got in trouble. Why? Because he was around the fire getting warm. And it's time you gotta stop being around Christian stuff. It's time you gotta stop hanging on the outskirt of Christianity. You gotta jump all the way in. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego went in the fire. They had to stay around the fire. They were in the fire, and the only thing they lost are the things that bound them. So your fire doesn't fire doesn't destroy you, child of God. Fire yeah. reveals who you are. Yeah. Yeah. And when you go through stuff and see stuff in your stuff that's not right, don't sit there and say that's how I am. Ask God to come. And I, so many times I had to ask God to help me respond better, help me to live better. I'm dealing with all these insecurities. We don't want to say we got insecurity. All this insecurity and self doubt and all this stuff that guilt and all this stuff. That's all of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Discouragement, all of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Depression. Oh, some some depression is chemically involved, but a lot of our depression is is it's all in dwelling in dark places. You can't come out of darkness and you can't get get uh, uh, come out of darkness and stay in dark places. Mm -hmm. You got to get out of darkness. Yeah. The only one you to deliver you is the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said He has delivered us in Him, who have delivered us from the power of darkness. Not only has He taken us out of the power of darkness, He put us in another kingdom. Mm -hmm. I'm about to let you go now. He put us in a <laughs> A kingdom of his dear son. Aren't you glad about this? Yes. It means that, 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 that there's a dark kingdom. And there's a kingdom of his son. And they're not evil kingdoms. By no means. The, the devil and Jesus don't arm wrestle. The devil is not even the same league as Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because the devil has been created. Amen. Jesus is creator. So don't get it twisted. I see people uh, on Facebook and so forth having the devil and the Lord playing checkers. They ain't in the same league. Having the devil and Jesus on, ain't no arm wrestling, ain't no wrestle going on here. The victory's already been won. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You talking about creator, dead with the creation? Oh, he got him. Yeah. He got yeah. him. He got him on a leash. Yeah. He got him on a leash. He knows his time is almost done. Okay. And guess what? When he tries to come against us, God takes that very attack that the devil sends against us and uses it for our good. Yes. yes. So take take a moment just to laugh. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> laugh because you know what? The same thing that was sent to destroy you, God's going to turn around. How many know God's going to turn around? Yes. Can I say God's going to work it in your favor? Yes. yes. God's going to turn around. It's going to work in your favor. Give God a praise right there. Yes. It's going to work Amen. in your favor. Even the dark things going to work in your favor. So take time to give God a praise. I wonder if we've got any grateful hearts today. Yes. Hearts yes. of thankfulness because of look what the Lord has done. God has given me favor. God has, has made me fit. God has qualified me for something I could never be qualified for. God has delivered me from the kingdom of darkness. And God has transferred me. You know what that was? I'm going to have to let it go after this. You know what the pick of this is? Back in the old days, if you, if you go to Sunday school and listen to the, the um, message this morning, you'll see how it relates to even this message. Because what a king would do, what one carpenter king would do, he would go into the land and pull the people out of their land and put other people there to make sure that land can never rise up against them again. That's right. This is what God does for us. When we become his child, he pulls us out of the darkness. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. So we won't go back in the darkness again. It's like once you come out of darkness, you couldn't pay me to go back to what I came out of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You couldn't offer me enough money to go back to what I came out of. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because I realized how dark that was. Yes. Mm -hmm. I look back on my thoughts were dark. My ways were dark. Yes. My reason was dark. But I didn't know I was in darkness. I thought I was having, I was popping my fingers and moving one. <laughs> <laughs> I was moving on and, and heck with anybody. I want to say, you know what I want to say? Heck with anybody else who has something to say about it. Because I'm my own person. I can do what I want to do. And how dare you tell me I can't be what I want to be or feel what I want to feel or say what I want to say. And I felt justified in being mean. Mm -hmm. Justified in mistreating people. Because it's, it's all about me. It ain't about you at all. Mm -hmm. That's how I was. And that's how we are in darkness. So once the Lord takes you out of darkness, amen, I have the Lord take you out of darkness, everything about you begins to change. Yeah. Yeah. All the hostility begins to leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the hurt and pain begin to lift out of your life. Because all we were doing, I got to leave y'all. I'm about done. 
All we were doing is what a hurt people were doing what? Hurt people. Hurt, I was so hurt and damaged. I didn't realize all I was doing was hurting and damaging other people with my attitude. Mm -hmm. I was so pinned up and, and bound with uh, uh, insecurities. And I'm so busy trying to show people I'm not insecure. If anybody sing a way that I was insecure, I got mad because they had touched what? My insecurity. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking around with attitudes and walking around with anger, walking around bitterness. Why? Because there was a war inside of me telling me one part of me was saying you can't do better. The other part was saying, well, this is as good as, good as it gets. And I found myself in bondage. Mm -hmm. But thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad Jesus stepped in? Yes. Aren't you glad he's the deliverer? Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad he's a way maker? Aren't you glad he's able to turn the light on and let you see there's another way? Now, Amen. I've come to the light, and I'm chasing after that light. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm chasing after him. Amen. With everything i got, I'm chasing after him. Do you know, you know why? Because he has the answer to everything that I've been going through. Mm -hmm. He has the answer to every, every uh, need in my life. He is that answer. Every insecurity, he is that answer. He is the answer to everything. And I just wish for Jesus. I can't. I can't wish anymore. I mean, I mean, I, I know some of us want to win at the Powerball and all these other things. And, and God bless you if you play that and maybe you win. But I, I got something greater for you. I Amen. cannot wish for you anything greater than Jesus. Amen. Because if you win the Powerball and go out and act a fool and get everything you ever thought you wanted to get, you still won't be satisfied. Not at all. <laughs> just going to want more. You're just going to want more stuff. More stuff just makes you want more stuff. I need more stuff to fix that other thing I got. I need something. Now I got to watch my stuff because people stealing my stuff. I got to buy, I get security now. Now I got to worry about where the security is stealing from me. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it goes Amen. on and on and on and on and on to where some of these rich folk can't sleep at night for watching their money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More money, more problems. I sleep because I ain't got nothing to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I know where it is. <laughs> and I sleep good. I sleep not because of my banker. I sleep because of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I sleep because I know he got me. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we thank God for that. I, I just want to encourage you to know Jesus Christ. That's what I'm trying to say to you. I could wish no better for your life than to know Christ because he's the only one that can satisfy you. Yes. Amen. He's the only one that can bring completeness to your life. He's the only one that can take you out of the darkness and put you into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You're in a kingdom that's undefeated. You're in a kingdom that can't be diminished. It can't be destroyed. It can't be wiped out. It can't be shaken. It will never leave you in God's kingdom. That thief on the cross knew about the kingdom. When he said, Lord, remember me when you come to that kingdom? And guess what the Lord said to him this day? Yeah. We would be saying, uh, your hair's too long. You got to wear a white robe when you come in here. Stop. <laughs> We'd be saying, uh, you got to get baptized. You got to get the right hand of fellowship. No, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do some good before you get to this kingdom. You gotta go and help somebody across the street. You gotta pay for somebody's groceries. You gotta do something. We'd be putting all these rules and regulations on that man, that thief on the cross. We would stipulate all the things he needed to do to go into God's kingdom. And Jesus said this day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that good news? Yeah, yeah. Unless we know my salvation, He's made us fit and qualified, not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus Christ did for us. Amen. Who we know. Not because of the things I do. We, we want to help uh, 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 people who are in need. We want to preach the gospel to help people's lives turn around. We want to help people. We want to make an impact in people's lives. Is a passion of this ministry. But guess what? None of that stuff gets me into heaven. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus. Only Amen. Jesus. That's why I work. Now, thank you, That's why I, I, I'm the flower. Mm. <laughs> trying to get away from the dirt. I'm trying to get away from the dirt. That's all. Amen. I'm not trying to be holy now. I'm not trying to put myself above. I'm just trying to live a little better life. Amen. Why? Amen. Because of what Christ has done for me. Amen. And it's not his rules and regulations, although he has them. It is because I love him, I want to serve him. Yes. yes. That's all. Amen. And that's what I want for your life today. Amen. So I could wish no better for you than Jesus. And I'm praying today that if you're listening to this and this social media or Facebook, whatever social media you find, this this message, I'm praying today that God would let these words enter into your heart and let you know that Jesus Christ is the only way. Amen. Amen. Let you know. You, you say to me, well, I, I got religion. I'm not asking if you got religion. We got a thousand religions. Pick one. Mm. There's thousands of religions. The world doesn't need religion. The world is going to hell with religion. Mm -hmm. In spite of religion. Mm -hmm. We don't need religion. We need a relationship. Yes. Yes. 
You don't need a religion or a denomination. You need Jesus Christ. Because he's the one that once he comes in, he'll tell you where to go, how to live, and how to serve. He's the one you need. Amen. Amen. So I'm offering him today. He said anyone who comes to him, he would in no ways cast out. Whosoever will, he said, let him come. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. I'm one of whosoever's. Yeah. Amen. 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 I love what the Bible says, Amen. whosoever. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not for the black man, the white man, the red man, the green. No, care what you are. It's for whosoever will. Amen. Let him come. Amen. Amen. So who you are, where you're out, where you are right now, I'm offering Christ to you. Just pray and ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and your life and be your Savior and your Lord. Ask him that. Pray that prayer and mean it. He'll come in. He will in no wise cast you out. God bless you, my family. Ask my son to come now and lead us in our closing prayer. Lord, thank you for once again visiting this household, this ministry, uh, the ears, the, our eyes, everybody that's under the sound of my voice right now, entering our houses right now, entering wherever we are, penetrating our hearts, going through our ears. Lord, thank you for being there for us in all that we go through, Lord. Thank you for this ministry that's drawing people closer to you. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't say thank you enough for all you're doing, all you've done, and all that you're going to do through us in this ministry. And everybody that we set forth from this ministry that's what they're going to do in their lives to draw more people to you it's not just us in this room it's everybody understand my voice it's all our job to bring closer people to you to your glory your peace your joy all the gifts that you give us lord so i want to say thank you for uh, um for touching me directly throughout this whole week it's, it's been a trying week it's been a trying year already uh, I know I keep a lot of stuff to myself, but Lord, you've been there through every every dark time, Lord. Everything that's going on. And I know that you, you don't just have your hand on my life. You have your hand on everyone's life at once. You're omnipresent. You're everywhere at once. There's no way we can say thank you enough for all that you're doing on a regular basis. You don't take days off. You don't need breaks like we need. You created a Sabbath for us so we could take a break because we need breaks. But you, you, you give us, you give us the strength to make it through every day, every situation. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, so our power comes from you. So we have all the power in the world because you give us that power, Lord. I can't say thank you enough. I, this week I've gone, I've met a lot of people. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of, a lot of people hurting in many different ways. I pray for healing for the. The lady I talked to earlier this week, we, we bonded over the fact that we both had multiple sclerosis. Um, she got some bad news that she's no longer relapsing. It's progressive. And mm -hmm. I know that you, if it can be switched one way, you can yes, switch it back the other way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I'm going to bring her Thank forth you, to you, Lord. I'm praying for mm -hmm. your, your we, we talk together about relationship with you. I want this situation to draw her closer yes, to you, Lord. Give her the healing and know, let her know that it's you that gave her the healing, not the doctor. The doctors are doing great jobs, but they can only do what you give them the power to do. Lord, touch her directly. Draw her closer. Uh, the, the lady that I talked to earlier this week, she's going through a lot of emotional issues. I don't know the full extent to it, but I know she's originally going through divorce. She's going through a lot of pain, and she's lashing out on people. Give her peace, Lord, so she can give peace to other people. Mm -hmm. Don't just heal her for her, but heal her for everybody that she comes in contact with, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to say thank you for, for, for accepting my friend, my friend Zach. One of the friends that visited me in the hospital, he just passed yesterday in a, in a tragic way. But I know by talking to other people that was around him on a regular basis that he had a relationship with you. And I thank Amen. God Amen. that he's there with you right now. He, you. I know he had lots of emotional issues on this side. Mm -hmm. He had issues with his family, his father, his pet stepfather, um, abandonment issues from being adopted. He didn't know his full family. He didn't know where he came from. But he knew that you were his father. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He knew, he knew that you were his friend. I have peace in my heart because I know he's 
in peace with you, Lord. Yeah. It was a tragic way to go, yeah. but I pray that it went fast <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't feel the pain. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being being here yeah. throughout my whole life. Being there for everybody around me. I know everybody has their own struggles, their own pains, but you know every situation. You know us more than we know ourselves, Lord. Yes. And you love us despite us, Lord. Yes. I can't say to you enough. I, I, I sin on a regular basis. If it's not through sin, it's not through thought, it's through deed. If it's not through deed, it's through motivation. I, 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 I know I'm not perfect, Lord. I try my best, but we are not perfect because I, I try to rely on my own strength, but I want to I want to give it all to you, Lord. Yes. Mm. No longer on my own strength, but by your strength, I will succeed. Yes. I'll make it through. I'll walk in peace and glory in the upright way that you want us to walk, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Please amen. bless this ministry. Continue to touch the hearts. Please give peace to anybody that's going through any kind of loss right now. There's a lot of broken people right now. There's it's so many people, but you are the mender. You're you're the the great pot maker. You can bring you could you could cr you could crumble us together so we can be built right back up to a new masterpiece, mm -hmm. one of your making, Lord. And I want to give all the hearts to you, Lord, yes. all the pain to you, Lord, because you can handle it all. There's nothing beyond you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. <laughs> God bless you, my family today. We do pray for Zach's family. We thank God for the brief time that um, I've been exposed to him. He's like a, a good young, a good kind young man. A couple times he came to check on Mike when Mike was sick in the hospital. We talked about it this morning. We think it was some of Mike's friends uh, shot away because they didn't know how they want to see him down, but they saw him in the good days. <laughs> they thought it was damn when it came in. They saw him the better. We saw him at the worst of worst days. We thank God for his mercies and grace. Amen. So um, we also, for some reason, somebody was a little long-winded this morning, so we're running behind. Um, <laughs> and we haven't had communion yet, so I want us to enter into our communion service. And we want to thank the Lord today. We talked about the price you paid for us on Calvary. Yes, sir. We talked about your deliverance, how you qualified us, the things you've already done for us. We didn't even get to talk about redemption through your blood. But we all these things you've done for us on Calvary, we want to thank you right now. And then we come to this holy moment as you invited us to come. You said to do this in remembrance of you and do this until you come. We want to acknowledge you and honor you today at this at this Lord's table. That this wafer that we partake represents your body was broken for us. And this juice that we shall drink represents your blood that was shed for us. As we come to partake of this a day, you should let a man examine himself and then come and eat. As we take a moment just to examine, do a self-examination, to ask if there's anything in us that we know of that's not like you, and the stuff we don't know that's not like you, that you will please forgive us and cleanse us so we can rightly discern and come to this Lord's table this day. We ask you all in Jesus' name. Let your heart say amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is broken for you and for me in remembrance of him. As people take this cup, representing the new covenant in his blood, we thank you for the blood that redeemed us. Let us now take together. God bless you, my family. Thank you for stopping by to be with us. We're a little late today, but I pray that God will, will bless the remainder of your day. Cause your day to be bright in his presence and cause spiritual growth in our lives. If I could just encourage you 
to be everything that God has designed you to be, then you'll be who you ought to be. Amen. God bless you, my family. King Praise Ministry, signing out.